them? Um, it's Leaf. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, everyone. Uh, it's been quite some time. Now, as traditionally, we are um, starting a little bit more early, you know, like, and for everyone who's visiting the streams for the first time, uh, I typically start about five minutes before for people to assemble, you know, like, and to give it a little bit uh, of warm up. Uh, f uh, and indeed, you know, like this, this stream being over the pause, you know, like for, I want to say six, seven months, uh, six, seven weeks, maybe, you know, like, and uh, f uh, I hope everything works well. I see that camera is glitching, you know, like, so sorry for a bad setup, you know, like at this point, but I will try to improve it uh, f uh, over the course of a couple of weeks with a, a decent microphone uh, f uh, and, uh, well, uh, f uh, a better camera probably because this one is yeah, this one is retired as myself and should be retired as myself. Speaking of which, I mean, like, because we, uh, I have decided to start uh, f uh, a series of uh, streams on this channel in English, you know, like for, a, again, a very simple reason. Uh, f uh, I have a lot of friends here in England and people who speak English only, and uh, f uh, I don't want to double the content, you know, like, so... Uh, I believe that at least half of the content on this channel would be presented in the English language, right? And uh, f, uh, given this fact, uh, f, uh, I think for everyone who's visiting first, uh, f, uh, uh, the, the, I, I oblige a little bit of uh, introduction and the explanation of what's going on here, you know, like on this channel and what we're typically doing uh, f, uh, uh, here with the community, right? You know, like so, putting things simply, my name is Alexia Savchenka, uh, f, uh, I'm mostly been working in the gaming and tech industry for last 25 years uh, f, uh, in a bunch of companies, a uh, few of them to mention GC Game World, uh, known for Kazakhs and Stalker, you know, like the uh, company called Blood Games back and, uh, when I was very young. I've uh, uh, worked in Epic Games for a couple of years as an evangelist and for five years in employment as a business development manager, uh, did this, this and that uh, f, uh, in other companies. Uh, been working uh, f, uh, in XLA and XO and 80 level for the last couple of years and uh, f, uh, about months and a half I decided to go into retirement you know like which is uh, again I wrote about why uh, the Facebook uh, and the LinkedIn and uh, f, uh, those are the most boring reasons you can think of you know like but if anyone's interested you know like it's uh, again, you know, like as banal as you could think of. After 25 years doing something, people start reconsidering things, you know, like, and uh, I have decided to spend more time with the family, uh, change my lifestyle to be a little bit more healthy, you know, like, and to think more about myself, my personal life priorities, and so on. Uh, f, uh, plus, you know, like, I wanted to dedicate more time to my creative hobbies uh, and things, you know, like, that I've been working at uh, f, uh, 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 in a hobby mode, you know, like, for quite some time. Uh, to do to do things, uh, I can say, you know, like, that uh, f, uh, uh, it's mostly writing, you know, like, I'm writing books, published author. Uh, for both in fiction and non-fiction and uh, for currently from the point of view of uh, well, actual activity you know like it's uh, most uh, for, uh, of the uh, time I spent you know like is basically writing books at this point uh, dealt with that I mean like again I mean like I'm, I need to apologize for the for the camera you know like and I'm not sure about wh what's happening with the sounds I hope you can hear me well I mean like at least uh, f, uh, uh, and yeah, I mean, like, this stream is for the catch-up, you know, like, I wanted to hang out with people, you know, like, answer some of the questions you might have, uh, f, uh, talk maybe a little bit, you know, like, with the current state of the industry and the market and games and what's going on, you know, because people are asking about this for a whole lot of time. Uh, f, uh, tell about what are my creative plans, what are the plans for the channel, you know, like, and what uh, f, uh, type of content we would be reviewing over here and what type of content would be presented, you know, like now, the, what, am, what am I busy with? Right, you know, like outside of, of uh, and what do I put into the definition of the re retirement, you know, like if you want to go this way. A strange echo, you know, like is actually 
pretty weird. Because like it shouldn't be here. Uh, but but I can hear myself. I mean like and this is extremely weird. Mm. Let me let me try to to do something about it. Mm. Dude, I mean like why 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 would this happen? You know, like like I just seriously just don't know about it. I mean <laughs> just weird. <laughs> Uh, audio I input oh sorry guys I mean like that to, to interrupt it you know like we will have to do the way it is you know like and then you know like I will again you know like talk to a couple of people and try to work my setup you know like to because you know I mean like it's uh, it's been rusty you know like it's uh, for, uh, not perfect by any means so uh, for on things being busy you know like for the last um, about it's getting to two months now right you know like it's it's been a lot of rest you know like to be honest uh, and it's been a lot of involvement involvement into creative type of activities uh, for, uh, there's a couple of books I wrote before, there's a number of settings I've been working before as well. Uh, for, and I'm currently building uh, for creatively what we'll, you can refer to a, a hyper setting, you know, like just the words I came up with, whatever. Uh, for, which combines five different stories and settings uh, for, uh, that i somehow been building through the course of the last 20 years. Referring to what it is, I mean, like I call it the Velvet Curtain. Uh, for, uh, it's uh, a combination of a cyber site, uh, what we what we discussed here back in the channel called Bloodlines, uh, a new thing that we're writing uh, for, together with uh, Alicia Primakina called Twelfth Hour uh, for uh, synthesis, which is something in the future. Uh, and the Versa Foundation is a Cold War setting. Now all of this is combined to the one large timeline and it will result into seven books at this point and uh, for one of which is written and one of which is written in half at this point it's a prequel to the cyber site uh, for, and number of subsidiary products you know like it's also they're also going to be uh, for graphic novels uh, for one of which cyber site uh, for, is currently has 11 issues you know like and 11 chapters and uh, for, there's going to be hard covers as well uh, there's also going to be board games related to this whole thing. Uh, what takes a lot of time is a website building for it, uh, for, which is a fairly complex animal. You know, like and we uh, there's a team that helping me with it, and the release for it uh, for, is set for the Q4, uh, for, mostly to the technical challenges. You know, like of how to make it work both the web and the mobile, uh, for, because like there's a lot of interactive elements. You know, like and uh, I want to have something which works well from the point of view of UI and UX, right? You know, like, and uh, for, there's going to be some efforts invested in it. Uh, as mentioned, CyberSight, uh, for the beginning, which is a working title, uh, is currently in the first draft. Uh, I wrote a half of it for this period of time. And uh, I'm writing the second half probably in the next couple of months, you know, like after which it's going to go into the editing. And as I've been saying for a, a number of times, you know, like it's not about the writing, the first draft editing is what the actual work, you know, like when it goes down to writing. Uh, I'm, also, I'm also consulting. Uh, for all of my consultings are related to virtual simulation, production, uh, for technology and uh, for Anvil Engine in one way or the another. Uh, consulting into a variety of uh, venues and businesses uh, for, from aerospace industry virtual simulation to carbon emission score and financial institutions and a bunch of things uh, still not a huge gig from the, my point of view you know like it's uh, something that takes about 10 hours a week maybe you know like but it, it keeps your mind fresh you know like it's intellectually interesting somewhat related to science uh, for, which is the final thing which I'm currently involved with minorly you know like I do a couple of research you know like with uh, for universities in United Kingdom and, and America uh, related to linguistics semiotics and application of artificial intelligences you know like in uh, some specific domains 
uh, which is extremely theoretical uh, for, uh, and in some sense even non-practical and that's more of a uh, intellectual uh, for, uh, food for the mind you know like if you want to call this way uh, that would be that uh, of uh, you know like quickly going into the whole channel related things you know like and what am I intending to do uh, is uh, a big part of 25 years career you know like which I'm uh, with no LinkedIn language or irony I consider to be um, uh, good for me you know like it's it's nothing to complain really you know like it's no one to blame in anything I didn't went through some drastic dramas you know like it's mostly been working on a good project with interesting teams now uh, in some of the part of this career is something which I consider to be the best years of my life you know like but uh, it's also been monitoring what's happening to an industry in general, you know, like, and uh, for, uh, and what's been happening is very simple. It's growth, right? You know, like what started back in the day is a bunch of nerdy people getting together with the desire to build something for themselves and maybe for people who surround them uh, for, with a high degree of innovation, you know, like evolved into a huge industrial complex. And uh, if you work in the big companies, uh, for, uh, by all means, which is not a bad or a good thing, you know, like it's just given. Uh, currently, you need to spend a lot of time and a lot of your mental effort uh, for working on the processes, knowing new people, making sure that everyone's happy, uh, for getting to lots of meetings, you know, like, and basically just spending a lot of time, you know, like, and working a lot in adjusting of your personal ways of operation, you know, like to accommodate the comfort of the structure. Uh, for, and in my point of view, it's just not effective. You know, like I know that big businesses requires big, large systemic solutions, you know, like I understand how this works, how this operates, you know, like and how the system is structured. But uh, again, you know, like after 25 years, priorities are priorities, you know, like and uh, for, I have realized for myself that there are two specialities I'm particularly good at, you know, like and there is one creative passion. I want to concentrate all my efforts. These two specialities, uh, quite simple, you know, like it's a big technological multifaceted complex projects with a lot of dependencies, preferably built at Unreal Engine, you know, like because I've been working with the technology for uh, early days of Unreal 3. Uh, for, and the second one is adoption of those technologies to the market as a part of a complex strategies. Uh, is there is anything relatable at the market which I would want to lend this expertise at this point? I don't think so. You know, like, and uh, for, so I, I, I mean, I'm just not following this post. Uh, these two specialities are calling for set of knowledges related to specifically production. And when we talk about this specific production, right, you know, like it's uh, mostly boring, but extremely essential things that people who are visiting this channel, you know, like they know what I'm talking about, you know, like we're talking about uh, how to properly structure uh, for the pass from uh, conceptualization to the actual release. We're talking about the necessity of the vertical slices. We're talking about the correct disposition of the resources in the timeline, the project development, how to prioritize uh, for different things in different genres, how to properly build uh, CCC concept, you know, like the camera of uh, character, you know, like and the core feature stuff around it, you know, like and uh, for a whole bunch of things that comes with an experience, largely, you know, like we will talk a lot about uh, specific cases, you know, like we will talk about what are the issues with the gunplay? Why the movement doesn't work well? How is movement connected to the camera? You know, like, and what to pay attention to? Uh, how not to get into the pitfalls? You know, like, related to the production from the point of view of proper point of scaling? You know, like, when you build a team? Uh, stuff like that, you know, like, and again, I think that those things are massively boring for a lot of people. I mean, like, they're definitely less entertaining than the political element of every big company. But I also think that production being largely disregarded uh, and the necessities and the things related to the proper production pipelines, you know, like being uh, very much underlooked, you know, like through the accelerated growth of the industry in an extremely volatile environment. And uh, if, if my 
you know, like experience can be useful for some of the people, you know, like then I think that we're doing a good job with this channel. The second subject is probably, uh, for, which we will highlight a lot, you know, like it's just in general, uh, for, um, industry, extra industrial bodies, how to operate, you know, like with an understanding of factors, what's expected at different stages, you know, like what relationships work well, we're not, you know, like what is the current forecast for uh, dangers, you know, like or maybe some myths to be bust, you know, like about uh, some of the modern technologies, you know, like and how to properly forecast and 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 uh, project, you know, like I'm sorry, sick project your project, you know, like into the future, uh, and uh, for, uh, in general systemic efforts, you know, like that surrounds every project development. I would not exclude that I may write down a video uh, like a 20, 30 minutes, you know, like which is opinion uh, about some of the important things going on in the industry uh, for, or around it or a particular video game I liked and I want to highlight some of the game mechanics, you know, like and uh, we, we probably would do that. Uh, I know that I promised the audience of the channel uh, for, to do a course about the business development, you know, like, but I think we will put it under the backlog for a couple of reasons. First of them, again, in my opinion, any conventional related to business development doesn't work and wouldn't work soon uh, into the current condition of how industry is changing. You know, like, I think that this is an aspect that has to be largely reviewed because a lot of tools are just simply not working. Shows visiting is not producing the results that it used to produce before, like your typical stuff like sending emails isn't LinkedIn, you know, like not return stuff. I mean, like, and this is something I'm uh, currently deeply thinking as well. I mean, like, just to give you a couple of examples, I mean, like, I, I genuinely think, you know, like that traditional types of media and marketing will cease to work and currently cease to work. Uh, traditional connections into the business development circles are not working as they've been working before. I think that the print media is currently that or almost that. Uh, I think that uh, YouTube influencers, they're always been on the rise. Of, uh, but I think that companies uh, like Mad Mushroom and LTK by Asmagont, you know, like is the future of, uh, of how games would be marketed, you know, like in the next upcoming years. And there is a lot of stuff to research. You know, like, so business development things, you know, like, I think we, uh, and moreover, I mean, like, I just don't really want to spend a lot of time talking about business because it's just not very interesting for me personally at this point. I mean, like the production stuff, you know, like, like, I, I think it's, it's cooler and better, you know, like, and in particular, you know, like just more interesting, you know, like, so we would concentrate more on that. Um... And on this 15 minutes, you know, like, I hope it suffices an introduction, right? You know, like, and people who just drop by their first, you know, like, they can uh, f uh, potentially, you know, like, uh, f uh, 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 like uh, know why they're here or decide that they might not be interested, you know, like, of listening to this old dude, you know, like, blabbering and being grumpy half of the time, you know, like, but... If you are genuinely interested in production pipelines, uh, company structural building, organization of uh, technologies and a little bit of science, I think you're in the right place, you know, like, and you can occasionally watch these videos, you know, like, and ask questions and stuff and everything. Uh, on that, let's look at the chat, you know, like, and see, and see what people are writing, you know, like, thank you, thank you everyone who's, who's visiting, you know, like, like, again, you know, like, it's been quite a... Uh, a pause, you know, like in our streams. Um, uh, disregarding this fact, you know, like uh, today is the day we actually got to a number of 4,000 subscribers, which I think is kind of crazy. Uh, if, uh, because again, I was not streaming for a long time. I guess people were just looking for some of the older content, you know, like, and uh, partially that's the reason why I have decided to renew, you know, like this, this conversations. Um, uh, jokes, uh, blah, 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 hello, hello, uh, f, uh, hello, grandpa looking refreshed. Uh, I am, you know, like it's it, uh, it, being away from the constant process of c 
communication in the world where over communication is an issue with the multiple messengers and task trackers and email and uh, phone calls and uh, for just people you're meeting you know like is something you first feel yourself a little bit torn away from like crazily you know like you when you just stop communicating like 10 12 hours a day you know like the first thing you feel you know like you feel like you're missing something you know it's weird you know like and then in four to six weeks you're actually starting to uh, be able to hear to yourself more i mean like and when you in general just talk less you know like and when in general you project less and you push some ideas and discuss some ideas less uh it, it gives you a refreshment of the mind you know like it's a, it's a very positive practice uh even if you're actively involved into uh any form of the uh, work you know like and including in the big companies you know like i highly suggest you to take your time and rest because i know that a lot of people just ignore that because like it gives you the better and wider perspective it gets you away from the echo chamber you know like and it actually uh helps you to be more productive mentally it just 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 like that you know like i understand that i cannot talk about obvious things you know like but you know i mean like uh sometimes obvious things as we have noticed noticed through uh, a long time of conversations on these channels are the hardest one to understand uh, uh again comments about uh images being leggy and uh echo you know like like existing here i mean sorry i'm not a professional streamer i will try to fix it uh, for, I have ordered a different microphone and I need to get myself a different camera which would probably take a week maybe two weeks you know like and uh, for, we'll, we'll get this running properly as it was working before you know like so give me a little bit of time uh, I'll get a technical part of this initiative uh, into order um, uh, uh, flickering this of course as mentioned uh, for, uh, this is the coolest kids chat and stream right now it's for nerds <laughs> this is this is nerds I mean like it's I had this uh, hilarious to my opinion you know like conversation uh, and the metaphor you know like uh, for, I wanted to express in the Facebook Facebook and the LinkedIn um, game development is not really the most excited thing for the people who are not developing games you know like it's and most of the subjects we're talking about I mean game developers you know like they're not they're not really that exciting you know like we're talking about some blabberish language you know like and uh problems that people don't want to solve and that are highly theoretical and non-relevant for the most of the people i mean like so by all of the definition we're nerds you know like and uh, uh if you're involved in production you know like if you're involved in the game development you most probably are and if you're not then that's probably something wrong about you doing this whole thing right you know like and uh for, at the same time with an industry growth right you know like we we kind of got to the point you know like where uh for, we have started to hang out with the cool kids you know like we we started to hang out with uh, uh jokes from the financial department and, and cool gals you know like from marketing and pr and you know like it's all started to work weirdly for everyone a little bit you know like because uh things which are cool for game developers are not necessarily cool for anyone else you know like and uh for, to understand a big source of production communication issues which is a source of all of the problems of the current gaming industry you need to understand the difference in culture and motivation uh, of people who joined the game industry through the course of last 10 15 years you know like and without that understanding it's very hard to understand why we are uh, where we at at this point you know like and it's very hard to take a decision uh which is good for you personally you know like so we will probably we'll talk about these things you know like because uh, you know like it's uh, uh because i've been vocal on the facebook you know like about some of the uh issues like layoffs and uh for a scandal bugging hollywood and game development industries you know like related to the woke culture and 
uh, for stuff related to uh, uh, corporate friction, you know, like in a bunch of companies and some of the projects just being straight out bad or canceled, you know, like I, I haven't changed my opinion in, in, in last five or maybe six years. I think that the core wall of these issues is the uh, for disproportionately distributed amount of power in between departments that produce quantifiable value and departments that provide the process bringing this quantifiable value to the market you know like and and i think that this is a big part you know like uh of of what's going on you know like and again you know like i'm i don't consider that to be good or bad you know like it's happened to other industries before i mean like but it's also a question of your personal perspective isn't it you know like it's if you are in the pit, if you are in the trenches, if you are a senior engineer, let's say, right, you know, like, and you joined an industry for uh, the sake of uh, uh, building cool innovation, you know, like, and build cool games, you're in law with games, you know, like, you probably will find yourself in the current industry, you know, like, being, well, not heard at least many times, right, you know, like, and... Uh, the way people get hired currently, you know, like it's a completely different standard, right? You know, like when 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 it happened back in the day, you know, like well back in the day, you know, like and just to bring you one example, you know, like people would get hired to the gaming company based on, uh, for, um, say here's a, a head engineer who's been working on a project, a team of 25, 50 people, and somewhere at the end of the alpha, you know, like they would understand that they need an additional backend engineer. A person who would help to solve them an issue related to, uh, I don't know, class replication, you know, like because they're out of resource, you know, like and they need someone with a specific knowledge, right, you know, like to go and solve it so to game to work properly. And they would go and they would do confidentials or they would ask friends and they would get this person who either have this knowledge or not, you know, like and it could be a 25 years old, a 40 years old, or whoever. You know, like, and uh, it would be not really relevant if person has all of those experiences. Is a junior engineer, senior, or like, like I don't know how people define it at this point. It would be completely irrelevant if this person has like five years in the AAA development or AA development. It would be a core question of there is a specific problem that needs to be specifically solved, right? You know, like, and uh, the criteria of person to be hired would be to look at his or her code. Right, you know, like, and uh, if, uh, maybe uh, this person has been working before on something related to this issue, so a person would be hired. Now, currently, it's much more complex, you know, like, because like HR processes and HR culture is working in a completely different ways, you know, like, you would need to qualify through the numerous criteria, you would need to have uh, a, just a very general definition of the experience, which I find to be extremely ironic because I still remember the time when. Uh, people in the game development were saying that it's not necessary that you would finish MIT or have a diploma on the degree if you know how to build it, you know, like we'll get you in. And now, you know, like it's literally a mirror situation where people would be like, well, it's actually not important if you actually know how to solve this issue. It's important if you has been working five years or six years or the 10 years in a AAA industry. And that would be the major criteria if we even talk to you. I mean, like, which is uh, weird, right? You know, like, and then you would need to qualify to a bunch of other things, you know, like of uh, for what do you think, what do you believe, what you eat, you know, like, and basically how much you're a comfortable person for the environment of the large amount of people, you know, like, and it would be equally important as your technical knowledge. You know, like, and uh, f, uh, that, uh, yeah, uh, predictably, you know, like, what it led to is there's a lot of people who would qualify to eight or ten, eight or nine from ten criteria that would define a good candidate, but this tenth point could be your actual engineering knowledge, you know, like, and and then you know, like, like we we see the drastic fall in the quality. Of, uh, and that's that's again that's an issue so uh yeah i mean like it's 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 a lot of things but again you know like it's uh i also think you know like that as a lot of developers say as a lot of developers who's been laid off as well you know like looking for some one simple explanation why all of the bad things are happening you know like is also irresponsible and infantile of, uh, because like to be completely honest you know like people in development 
uh, are not perfect as well. I mean, like, and uh, a lot of people joined the development corps for the last five years with no motivation to build a great game. I mean, like, they joined just for money, I mean, from other industries, you know, like, and the lack of this motivation actually leads to the quality of the products are falling as well. And that's, we're not even scratching the progress of decision internally in the company, you know, like, of how that works, right? I mean, like, because that would explain a lot as well. Like, it's of uh, just about taking risks with a larger budgets, you know, like, and like all of the things combined together, you actually would understand, you know, like that there is a very rational explanation why Hollywood and the game development industry that used to be most innovative entertainment industry back in the day is currently most counter innovative industry ever. You know, like it's just no one wants to take risk. Uh, it's it, and, and no one wants to take responsibility for it. So, you know, I mean, like it's uh, for a, a, a little bit of a piece of a puzzle of a logical explanation. Um, um, uh, please ask questions as well, you know, like it's been quite a pause, you know, like, like today we have, um, uh, just a stream, you know, like, which I also marked, you know, like as a, for a headline head page one. And so I, which is a little bit a shitty thing because like of the quality, right? So it, you know, like, but I think that it kind of makes sense, you know, like, because like, uh, for bilingual people would watch it and they would understand what the channel is about. Um... Uh, you are the author of the books you have constant conversation in your head non-stop in this case i do you know like it's uh, uh there's been a uh, a funny episode in the house you know like it's um when i write dialogues occasionally i would start start talking through it in general you know like and you can imagine how it looks from let's say my wife right you know like just husband you know like sitting at a computer looking a bit crazy just you know like just writing being very immersed talking to yourself you know like and she would be like you're right you know <laughs> like like are we are we getting crazy that quickly you know like not that senile you know like retirement is not an excuse i mean like which is hilarious right you know like but you do i mean like when you write a book uh and when you get very much immersed if you do everything right uh, for you kind of um, you you replay situations in your head all the time you know like you, you you replay scenes right you know like you uh you're trying to think about your characters outside of the time and space continuum because like you're writing at this exact point you know what happened in the past and you know what's gonna happen in the future and when you're thinking about fairly complex map of events and characters going on at the same point you know like it's actually it's emotionally and mentally quite quite taxing you know like so now uh, it's important to build your routines around your writing you know like i've uh, i think i've been mentioning about this in one of the other conversations of, uh, I have realized for the last uh, for, uh, number of writing sessions, right? I mean, like that my perfect schedule uh, is to write for the half of the day at Monday and Tuesday, make a pause at Wednesday and Thursday, which is my kind of weekends now, right? You know, like, and then you write Friday and Saturday and you do some remarks, you know, like and some technical work at Sunday. Uh, well, resting the half of the Sunday, like it works much better, like really, you know, like and uh, writing, writing in general just puts you in a completely different scenario, you know, like it's, uh, it, 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 and she is a doc mistress as well. I mean, like you, you kind of torrent in your mind, you know, like in between a couple of realities, one of them being reality of imagination, you know, like so, uh, you, you like even even from externally you look a little bit weird. You know, like, you look like you're, like, super in the zone, you know, like, and because you are, you know, like, and you're thinking about a whole bunch of things. And, uh, but it, it's hell of an interesting thing, you know, like, and writing is a beautiful thing. It's uh, something which been passion from since I've been seven, you know, like, and it's very good to get into that. Um, writing question is then, uh, how do you deal with the writing uh, blocks blank list syndrome? Uh, it's a good question. Uh, for, uh, I'll give you a couple of, um, well, very practical advices. Uh, for, uh, they're well known, I mean, like, but it would make sense to repeat them, I guess. And then I would give you a couple of my personal considerations. Well, the first of them, when you are going through the first draft, don't edit anything. Like, 
way of writing is imperfect by all, all possible meanings, but you need to understand what you do best. For me, it's a dialogue, you know, like I'm shattered exposition. I mean, like my, all of my expositions uh, in interiors and exteriors go later. I mean, like, and this is partially the reason why I often have co-authors, right? You, I'm a dialogue and storytelling person. I mean, and I, I, I really can contribute from the partnership that someone would go through an existing thing, you know, like, and they would add, like, just a micro description of, of uh, like, she was standing in a corner next to the house of the 18th century, like, wearing that specific thing, corrected the glasses before saying that, or in original, you know, like, it would be uh, Ellen smirked, dialogue, 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 you know, like, John scratched his back, like, leaned and gave her a look, dialogue, 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 you know, so... Do what you do best and do not hold yourself because if you start rewriting stuff that you're writing at a point, you know, like you're actually, you're just, you're killing your momentum, you know, like, so don't do that. I mean, like go through the first draft as quick as possible, tell the story, do whatever you do best, leave the things that you would need to fill in in blanks, you know, like a little bit later. A second one is I benefit from planning things out knowing 100% that I will start breaking my plan once it's written, you know, like, but plan is just kind of strollers, you know, like that allows you to see the full picture and identify some of the key events that would need to be depicted like 100%. So it's much easier to think, you know, like into the circumstances where there are some anchor points and you, you need to connect those dots together. I mean, like, and I find it extremely hard to write without any plan. And I find it extremely hard for me personally to write consistently up to the plan, you know, like, but it's good to have this and that. Uh, those are two very general advices. Uh, for, uh, now, uh, two consideration from my point, because like uh, for writing the cyber site beginning, right, you know, like it's uh, for, I wrote the first and the second act with all of the interludes quite quickly. I have a plan for it. Uh, for the third act is very complex for me personally. And the fourth act is fine, you know, like in the third act is complex because of, uh, it's uh, it's very depressive, swampy, Fincher like um, corks rotating batshit happens, you know, it need it needs to produce this impression, you know, like of being hard, you know, like think about uh first mafia game when the main character been drinking right you, you know it's it's the raw the those elements especially in the four act structures uh, uh and before getting to the third act you know like i revisited the plan and i actually took about a week of rest and i'm also taking about three days of rest to flesh it out and rethink about it in my mind and come back to it after a short pause you know like do that you know like it's uh, it, it's it's typically is helping uh what also helps you know like is that when you have a specifically flash cool idea uh, for, and you are in the mode and in the structure uh it's totally fine to step step back from the narration and write a separate scene for a four or five pages because you just feel so and ideally you know like you will structure your work in a way where you would be writing, 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 you know, like, and when you have this uh, inspirations, call it, you know, like, and you would have like five, six, seven scenes being already done because you felt this way when you were the half of your book. And then you would just insert them, you know, like down the line once you're finishing, creating this systemic narrative effect, you know, like that will help you to uh, finalize on the things. So I think, I think if I can say something, you know, like about it, then, then these two things. You know, like it's, uh, f uh, it's, it's uh, which are highly helpful for me personally. Um, what do you think about the statement, Team Fortress 2 was a metaverse game before it becomes mainstream? Um, I think that most, there's a lot of games that can be called metaverse before metaverse, uh, depending from what you put into this definition. Uh, like uh, the, uh, any game structure is kind of metaverse. You know, like especially every multiplayer game of uh, everything that presumes um, a number of characters operating into the same environment of uh, believing into this environment with some level of role play and a high level of involvement, you know, like is, is the core of the metaverse thinking. 
of uh, uh, now making this and scaling this to the point where this is a worldwide phenomena, which is the challenge. I mean, like that's a completely different thing. So I think we, we had a lot of prototypes of the metaverses before of, uh, in gaming, you know, like, and sometimes on the internet as well. Uh, for, but it, it's, it's a systemic challenge, you know, like to call it metaverse as it is uh, currently. Uh, and I think that it will take five, 10 years, you know, like to get something working that would be close to that definition. Uh, and that's mostly related to uh, uh, hardware related issues, data storage and data transfer questions. Uh, again, bunch of boring things people don't like to talk about. Because like uh, current status quo of everything about tech and entertainment is that uh, everyone who starts to talk about real issues get 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 really shushed. You know, like people people in general don't want to talk about actual problems these days. You know, like it's everyone has to be optimistic because money likes to hear optimistic things. Everyone need to punch up only. Uh, if, uh, everyone should be happy all the time. You know, like but. Uh, again, what do I know, you know, like, but in, in my opinion, in my experience, this is not how things get done, just in general. I think that um, games as complex of the projects, they went into the AAA segment, and tech as complex as a global worldwide tech that want to be phenomenous, uh, they're much closer to the science than uh, applicable development in general and i think like the people need to look into the science more you know and uh, uh this is specifically the reason why i'm communicating with some of the scientific people in academia you know like because uh, i find it genuinely interesting you know like to understand the pipeline of how the problem emerge how people get together how they form the thesis how they spend a lot of the time related to experiments and hypothesis and the research how they sort it out, how they put it in the experimental stage, how to solve it from the point of view of an experiment, how they repeat it, and only after that they serialize it. You know, like, and uh, again, no one likes it because it's like too long, you know, like, and we live uh, in the rules of the economy where everything needs to accelerate into uh, for geometric progression up to the skies, you know, like, but again, you know, like, of. Uh, boring stuff right you know like the the serious problems require serious consideration and a scientific scientific approach to be solved it's just what i believe um i guess uh one of the biggest challenges for me is when i have a rough plan start drafting it out realize it does not come together and it all clocks uh well see i mean like you you shouldn't be too much worried about it you know like and uh, i think that this fear of repercussions of do something wrong in what you're building and writing uh it actually goes away once you have a couple of projects published because like once you do you will understand that writing up the first draft is like 10 percent it's like 10 percent of what you're gonna do i have published two books to the market i have two books in fiction in work i have currently i have uh, for the world building in in uh, final drafting uh, and the game as business book you know like it will be translated why one way or another and published this year right so I can say that I have a relatable experience you know like to writing and both editing into the ropes and market I haven't encountered the situation where you draft that you have edited three or four times would not be edited five to ten to fifteen times after that, uh, majorly or minorly, you know. Like so, just understanding the fact that what you're doing would be changed so many times when you write a book really helps you not to get stumbled, you know, like over the uh, initial expression and the first draft in general. I mean, like so, just just let yourself go. I mean, like just just write, you know, like do do as you will, tell the story in a way that you can tell the story get the consistency of the story get the framework there you know like and then start to flesh out details then make it perfect i mean like your first draft is a vertical slice i mean like in some very weird ways in definition that it doesn't fit the definition i know you know like but that's your grand prototype you know like what gonna happen but 
uh, for once you once you finish it, you know, like it's uh, the the work begins really. Now uh, there's a problem when I work from the point of view of science. Uh, for when at my last meeting there were five candidates of sciences and it simply did not lead to anything. Well, because like balance is everything, right? You know, like we we're talking about we're talking about scientific people and like people from hard science and academia. You know, like their whole job and the whole orientation is to work for a long time on extremely complex issues. It doesn't mean that you cannot take this approach and start using it for more applicable issues on the lower scale. You know, like and it, it, it doesn't break the stages. You know, like and stages should be there. Because like what we like what I find problematic, you know, like and again, I mean like to the merit of people who are uh, keeping up to this concept, I mean like they probably understand market better than I do. You know, like but this whole idea of uh, service become more important than the product uh, is sounds to me like an antithesis to what I believe for so many years and I can't be wrong here I mean like but if I will comply to the fact that I'm wrong and I would need to literally sign in into a different religion it would mean that I would need to choose to adapt over the course of next five to ten years from what I've been believing before and I simply just don't want to do that Moreover, I believe that the both concept can be presented at the market. The truth is, you know, like that our industries are extremely leading to extremes. Like it's people are like, if this exists, everything else should be dead. You know, like the truth is, you know, like it's everything exists at its own time, and uh, and the same time, and there are people who would want to buy those things and those things and did these things and 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 that things. You know, like and. Uh, the real issues why something get adopted by the market or not adopted to the market, you know, like often lies in a completely different field. Uh, it, it's like I wrote this post differently uh, recently, you know, like about the uh, this whole scandal about the and the scandal like this is like let's call it an unwrapping situation about the woke culture like being submersive to existing art piece, you know, like and stuff like that, right? I mean, like people are super uh, passionate about it and the online. Uh, conversations especially at Twitter right you know like where I think that the problem actually lies in a completely different field you know like it's is there a problem that people want to create more content related to people uh, gender and sexuality and uh, uh, race or whatever no it's not you know like it's it, it's it's actually there is a lot of examples and a lot of good examples where do stories been been forged very professionally, you know, like, and in almost all of the instances, they're very successful. Like, uh, my favorite example here would be probably the the line of the Alan Turing in the Into the Imitation Game, you know, like, which is a an amazing depiction in the story and the conflict, you know, like, of the human personality versus government and the society. And so when we talk about the Alan Turing, who was infamously gay, right, you know, like, and who was shown upon by the British government, British society, you know, like, on this whole thing, we're talking about the person who literally helped to win the war, you know, like, but who has to suppress his true himself and feelings, you know, like, giving all of himself to his country, not taking anything back. It's an amazing, it's a huge traumatic conflict, and this is a story that teaches you so many things. I mean, like, and it's a good story, which is a part of the bigger story. So, that's a good example. I mean, like, or, like, talking about, like, the powerful like the female characters and soldier jane is a beautiful example you know like it's a great movie right i mean like it's a person going against the stream right you know like just to try to prove you know like what they believe like that's great the problem you know like with with situation around like the the current issue you know like is that a lot of the stories are just done in a very lazy way you know like it's like people like constantly want to find a silver bullet not to work and not to put too many effort and there's literally just a lot of people who are like maybe i don't need to make a great movie or maybe i don't need to make a great game if i would just take a bunch of hot marketing uh for things which will 100 percent polarize people opinion and just lazily throw them together you know, like, and at the end of the day, you just get a bad product, you know, like, and people who are trying to look at this product or play the product, they're, like, unsatisfied and they're unhappy. Moreover, I mean, like, more of this, most of the society currently and most of the gamers and people who go to movies 
we're living in so much of a macro a macroeconomic situation you know like where everything just got more expensive uh world is in tatters world is in shit like what's happening right you know like all this stuff is going on you know like and uh, uh people are losing their jobs people are, like going to the pubs and beer got like 20 30 percent per class you know like like what used to be in england like five pounds is seven pounds right i mean like and the rent is going up 10 20 percent and food and essentials are getting more expensive utilities getting more expensive of course people will try to prioritize more quality product you know like that they can buy uh, less frequently now i mean like why anyone's surprised i mean like and then you know like like the other thing you know like it, it, it creates a lot of confusion it creates like literally just a lot of frustration because like people who are doing these things you know like in the corporate right you know like they're like they feel like bad as well because like it's something that used to be working and then they committed on the promises that it will be working more you know like we're like literally studio executives you know like and uh, a whole bunch of writers and a whole bunch of people who create content you know like they've been living in this reality you know like of a financial anomaly extremely successful financial anomaly right before COVID, and then like in the content industry right in the COVID times you know like where you could have legitimately feel like everyone would will consume everything like because because there's been a reason for it like before COVID, you know like people had more money to spend people would just go and buy twice more games people would go to the all of the movies you know like because they have a more disposable income and uh at the COVID times you know like people are like oh like people will play games anytime you know like yeah well because it's an extreme form of the escapism and that a lot of people and predominantly united states and maybe in some other countries as well been provided stimulus checks as well which is free money people would spend on this content well guess what this is not happening today you know like and this is a completely different situation and therefore you know like those changes happened into the production complex and quality is different and the priorities is different in the products and people don't like it like and so there's so much friction around it uh, uh question what do you think of small scale niche mmo let's say up to 10k core community offense could it be viable at all uh, i actually think that this kind of products are viable i actually think that the best thing you can do given you have an opportunity is that um uh, you can go away uh, from an industry or whatever you know like and if you have a little bit of a saved resource or good connections uh, for, uh you can bootstrap the team together and you can try to build something that would be strongly uh focused to the niche market because uh, the truth is you know like is uh, if it's strongly appealing to the niche market you can handle it I mean, you can find specific influencers who work with this specific market. You can go and uh, f uh, you can focus your development and work. You will get more of a focused response from the community. Your community would be more organic. You would know how to satisfy their demands. They would be more sticky and more loyal. You will build your core audiences more quickly. You know, like, and uh, in, in, in general and overall, this is a, just a more of a viable scenario. You know, like, and... 10,000 of constantly playing people is actually a lot of people like it's like what like 10,000 if, if you can build a game that where you have a fan base of 10,000 people with the concurrent users being like a thousand players you know there are 500 600 players this is an incredibly good start like it's it puts you on the map I mean like you you can sell this game and then you can sell some cosmetics whatever given this is a live ops right you know like and maybe you can build a completely different economic system where people who likes it you know like and who likes you as well I mean like and who communicates with them very openly in a very transparent fashion you know like maybe you would have like a bunch of additional money sources like Patreon and whatever you know like and once you have this whole model work and once you understand that these two ten thousand people are super happy they're returning and the game works from the point of view of mechanics and niche and everything trust me you will have people lining up to you to scale it because that would be a proven case that people actually like it i mean like and you might get surprised how if you get 
10,000 satisfied customers, how that can easily go out of control with someone mentioning you at Reddit, you know, like and more people just jumping in and starting to play in your game. And your biggest problem would be how to scale your server base in your backend. So I think it's the right way to do that. I think that everyone needs to build proof cases of whatever they're building these days. And if you're like old enough, if you've been in this industry for some time, this is how it used to be. Like there's been this crazy times, you know, like in a variety of different cycles where people would just sell paper, you know, like, and people are like, ah, oh, just to start to do something, I need investment. You know, you know my opinion about it, investments, you know, like in, in how I perceive them, you know, like in general, should be in most of the cases, you know, like the tool of the scaling. Uh, but, but, you know, I'm more of a private equity heritage than venture. I mean, like, and venture people and uh, they, they do things differently, you know, like, but in general, you know, like the, the traditional pipeline is uh, how you get into games. You often ask this question, you know, like it's either you go and get a job. If you're like not the person, if you're like myself, if you don't like authorities in general, if you're like wired this way, right? I mean, like if you want to build something by yourself if you want to own the process you know like if you want to be completely creatively free to do anything and you don't have anything like there's no saying you're in a privilege when you have a shit lot of money or you have no money at all you know like if you're in the middle now that situation sketchy is problematic because you, you need to calculate stuff you know like you need to be dependent from the bunch of the factors but if you have nothing you know like you go and you find people who want to do something with you and you build the proof of concept and then you start showing this concept door to door and to the influencers and to the gamers and to the players very early and you start to build stuff with themselves and when you build this community when you build this feedback when you build this something that proves that you can build something that people genuinely can enjoy you know like you can go and scale it with whoever you want and moreover you would have a lot of more creative freedom when you do that and your position would be much more in the leverage against all of the external feedback that potential publisher or investor can give you. I mean, like, and I would really, really consider, you know, like, 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 like encourage people to think that this is a legitimate way to go and do things. Because otherwise, I mean, like, look, I mean, like, it's if you have an idea, you know, like, and you go and raise investors money, uh, you can very easily burn them down. You know, like, it's no one if, if someone tells you that they understand what players want at this point or at any given time of the market and they know it 100 percent it's a scam or person is a liar probably you know like and uh because like the the right answer for it is there are different niches and if you build something in particular you need to respect your audience you need to build it and you need to go and start communicating with the audience to make sure that they like it. You know, like once once you do, right, you know, like then you know if you want to continue to do what you've been doing or you need to change it or uh, or just shut it down and try something else. Because, you know, uh, agocentric opinion and this idea that you can build anything and then marketing people will just literally talk to people down and show down they throat everything just buying traffic you know like and stuff that time's just gone and it would be even worse because like the cost of the user acquisition is just gonna go only up and mostly because of artificial intelligence because people are like oh ai gonna have uh, take our jobs you know like an ai gonna do this crazy shit and capture the, the 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 earth and whatever you know like and but people like literally underlook what actually ai tool sets are doing currently to the market and i don't tell you that one of the things they're doing is that actively changing the whole of the dynamic and the cost of the advertisement dollars because there's just simply much more people who create artificial content done with the artificial intelligence and they write and read and write those books at the Amazon that typically consists of 40 pages and they titled like how to launch your 100 uh, AI written books and screw the algorithm so you get popular 
you know, like, so I, I, and they do that, you know, like, and what happens is, you know, like, is that we literally have an army of people who've already started to produce the content that they will actively advertise for a thousand, two thousand, three thousand, four thousand, five thousand dollars, involve some influencers, you know, like, and it will just create more positions of the market. They're using advertising services. And that means that advertisement costs just going to hike up drastically. And it would not be super noticeable for people, you know, like into the smaller entities. Because for them, it would be like, well, I mean, like, yeah, right. I mean, like I spent a thousand. Now I need to spend like a thousand and two hundred two hundred dollars, you know, like on it. But think about the advertisement budgets used by the super big companies who run LiveOps games and who literally need to spend 70 to 80 percent of all of their income just to sustain the player base at the same level like this 20 percent will kill them like it just gonna happen three years like so yeah duh you know like you you need to start thinking about how you work again with the organic core communities you need to not shy away these people and you need to be in a very good relationship with the people who are using your product especially if this is an online product so there you go um yeah um any more questions it's um been uh an hour and uh, one minute you know like so uh i think i think it's been uh, a good start i mean like uh for the, the my plans with the streams like i said you know like i want to start doing a lot in english because i want to practice uh my english public speaking skills as well you know like because they're far, far away from perfect it's a lot of parasite words uh i'm talking with way too many likes like 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 you know like and i really want to work on that a little bit uh, f uh, and uh, f uh, well, also, uh, I just you know, I mean, like, like I said, there's a lot of, lot of people. I mean, like, who speak in English, and uh, just be super happy, you know, like to have them here in the chat. Also, guys, I think it's a good practice for all of you who are like in general speaking Russian, you know, like to practice your English, you know, like in those sessions and communications, you know, like, and that will be highly beneficial for you in our global market. So, yeah, well, I guess. Thank you very much you know like and uh i'll be seeing you oh on the schedule of uh um two times a week i think so i mean like i want to have a little bit of a pause you know like and uh for actually solve the problem you know like with all the setup you know like and uh because the problem with the sound and the problem with the camera wasn't apparent before i started to stream uh for, it was all fine in the obs uh for, and now you see it's just just weird right uh, f uh, but yeah, no, cool. Uh, f uh, have a good day, have a good week, you know, like, and uh, f uh, thank you very much. I'll be seeing you around the block, guys. Cheers.